Hello everyone, uh, so this is my last part of the last session. Uh, it is basically uh, I will be uh, talking more about the conclusion of this whole maternal infant young child nutrition uh, course. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this it is all this whatever that uh, we have mentioned has uh, come of course from field experiences, but we have also conducted uh, research uh, in many areas and it has it has this are all evidence based, but as I mentioned uh, we are still learning ok. And uh, every time that we help mother, every time that we uh, teach her uh, different techniques of breastfeeding or every time we uh, discuss with mothers on complementary foods and we actually try in the field, uh, every child teaches us new things. So I am sure uh, you know you all would uh, feel the same that you will uh, experience uh, learning you know uh, throughout your life ok. So uh, one thing I want to kind of uh, tell you that this uh, as you learn please share your experience with us because uh, this was more of a sharing uh, of course through NPTEL it was more of a one way uh, session uh, except for live Q&A &S &A sessions. But uh, you know uh, I would like to learn from you all your experiences it would matter a lot to me you know. Uh, now just talking about uh, different uh, uh, phases you know of uh, maternal infant young child nutrition and I want to kind of start with uh, pre-pregnancy nutrition, uh, adolescent nutrition, uh, focus on protein, please avoid uh, junk food, uh, we are seeing lot of PCODs, PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, polycystic ovarian diseases in children. So uh, adolescents I am talking about and then they have uh, when they get married they have infertility problems. Uh, so do avoid junk food, uh, do avoid uh, too much of carbohydrate, decrease your carbohydrate intake uh, remarkably, increase your protein intake, increase your good fat intake ok and that would basically help get you into good health. Uh, do muscle resistant exercise to tell them to do a uh, lot of play sports to kind of uh, if they have access to uh, sports arena like swimming pools they can do swimming or they can do dancing, uh, they can do whatever they want but uh, I prefer that they are very active, uh, avoid a lot of uh, screen, uh, avoid social media you know. Uh, also I do recommend holistic uh, health, uh, so for example uh, I do recommend that if adolescent can go through meditation courses or some of those you know uh, that would really help them a lot. Uh, Pre-pregnancy similar same thing as I mentioned in adolescent you are preparing your uh, body for conception ok. So focus again on your protein, focus on your nutrient which are not uh, easily available uh, like your B12, choline you know those you know, nutrients are really important, iron is important in India struggling with iron deficiency anemia. So do, do focus on those nutrients ok. Uh, again uh, keep the carbohydrate content low in the, uh, in the, in the diet, uh, sugar jaggery absolutely I do not recommend it at all. Uh, for uh, lactating mothers, uh, pregnant mothers similar things you know uh, as, as you watch the nutrient count of day to day foods. Uh, you will uh, you will definitely now know that what food to recommend to uh, pregnant and lactating mothers also. Uh, lactating mothers you know I mean uh, I get a lot of queries from mothers whether she should have satavari, whether she should have methi seeds or whether she should have moringa leaves. Yes of course you can have it but believe me your output will increase when baby gets good milk transfer. Okay, so it is basically uh, demand and supply, demand and supply. So if demand is more means if the more milk is get kind of pulled out from mother's breast uh, by proper latching, uh, proper milk transfer will automatically will increase mother's supply. 
okay that's nature's way to protect that baby to make that baby grow okay if the milk uh, pulling or the milk transfer is not good milk is being developed but baby is not being able to latch properly and get that milk out uh, however hard you try with all these galactagogues uh, eventually it will decrease okay so just to make sure that uh, you know uh, focus on the technicality aspect uh, for pregnant mothers i strongly recommend that besides working on nutrition at i uh, see around 8 month to 9 months around 8 months uh, for last 2 months of pregnancy i insist that mother should learn proper breastfeeding technique and cross cradle hold really works so well any hold whatever works for you is fine but in my program uh, i've seen remarkable results with cross cradle hold technique okay so uh, please teach mother those uh, counseling points which are important teach her how to look for uh, hind milk how does she know whether it's for milk hind milk you know uh, talk about nighttime feeding teach her all this is a content okay because what has happened and this is this has been my experience that all these mothers they come to us uh, i'm talking about the educated mothers you know privileged mothers they come from corporate hospital to us uh, after one month of undergoing so much of complication of lactation just because they were not guided properly during pregnancy and uh, when uh, mothers were in the hospital as well as when she went home so i do recommend that please kind of prepare your uh, client pregnant clients uh, in the last trimester okay teach her about breast crawl teach her about uh, uh, nipple complicate nipple shield complication tell her that she does not need nipple shield so even if somebody offers nipple shield in the hospital she should immediately refuse it say no i don't need it i know how to breastfeed i know how to latch the baby okay so if she is confident believe me she'll have such a beautiful journey uh, as soon as baby comes out okay Uh, also teach her how to breastfeed the baby if she has a cesarean section teach her how to manually express because believe me 99% of the doctors would say oh you have cesarean section you know you cannot uh, breastfeed the child because milk doesn't come in and that's absolutely uh, it's a myth okay so you teach her how to do press compress release how to uh, you know uh, if if baby has difficulty latching do not rush to start formula do not rush you know teach mothers all these different uh, kind of uh, survival mechanism before she goes into delivery okay so uh, teach her how to express teach her how to store that milk teach her how to kind of uh, feed the baby with spoon uh, direct latching when the baby mother is in, you know uh, in cesarean section also while she is uh, you know post uh, cesarean when she is in the hospital for 4 5 days teach her how to put the baby kind of you know we have shown that in a tutorial so prepare her prepare her with that prepare her with all this you know these are her tools okay when everybody is against uh, breastfeeding in the hospital all these tools that you have taught her will come come in in uh, in the use okay so do that and uh, as of course lactating mothers you know uh, more she is prepared during pregnancy better it is do talk about her nutrition she will require good amount of protein and other nutrient dense food uh, give her energy in the form of good fats again you know uh, no, don't give too much of carbohydrate especially starch uh, give them good carbohydrates like uh, all the different vegetables uh, you know uh, above the ground grown vegetables you know Uh, all that of course absolutely millets are really good you know uh, uh, leafy vegetables are extremely good your dals your you know uh, dairy products for lactating mothers you know amazing seeds nuts so focus on those nutrient dense food rather than just rotis and rice rotis rice and laddus okay uh, 
after baby is born as I said about the baby now. So again teach mothers or show her some tutorials on how to take care of newborn babies you know uh, how like you know a lot of time I see babies are wrapped so many times or babies are not properly especially low birthed babies are not given proper KMC. So that is also very important so kind of you know you have all this uh, access to all this uh, health spoken tutorials so do use them in your practice and you know just kind of be very empathetic and think of how if you have gone through all this thing what what would have helped you and you know just support uh, this mother as your own sister or as your own you know friend uh, and uh, it will it will go a long way it will be easier for you also to manage uh, all these uh, issues it will you will not find any complication if everything goes right you know and that is again it is in your hand how uh, well prepared uh, your client is uh, you know from the time of pregnancy ok. Uh, and then comes your uh, complementary feeding stage. So what I do recommend is to uh, of course always give information about exclusive breastfeeding till 6 months of age but uh, I do recommend to sensitize mother uh, I think by the time child is uh, 4 months old you just sensitize her sensitizer about a dietary diversity, sensitizer about you know uh, picky eating and all that how to start uh, complementary feeding, uh, sensitizer about uh, personal hygiene, how to store uh, foods, talk about uh, food that she can start with once baby finishes 6 months you know. So you can basically start uh, as you had trained this mother uh, during last trimester about uh, breastfeeding similarly I want you to train train this mothers uh, when baby is 4 months of age you know keep, keep sensitizing her so as soon as baby is 6 months old then she will know what to do you know. And one more thing I want uh, all the lactation consultant to know it is good to follow up these babies. So if you have kind of helped this mother uh, with lactation uh, in say first 3-4 days in the, in the hospital I want you to follow these babies up at least check the weight make sure that whatever advice you have given is uh, it helped or not because I get so many mothers from all over India uh, you know they say that okay I had this lactation consult in the hospital but then you know I do not like you know I am not in touch with her. So then how will you learn whether whatever advice you gave worked or not. So if you really want to learn from the field I would not let that baby uh, go till you see demonstrate 40 to 50 grams of weight gain per day for next 2-3 weeks because that is what WHO recommends 42 or 43 grams weight gain per day for at least up to 5th week right. So I would uh, recommend at least kind of uh, monitor those babies and see your advices are working or not because if it is not working that means you want to relearn or you want to understand where you are going wrong ok. Uh, Again once a child turns 6 months or complete 6 months uh, again you will have to handhold the mother for probably next couple of months or so ok because she is always skeptical about what food should I start, what should I give, whether I can give egg or not, whether I can give meat or not, whether I can do this or not as you guys had question mothers have much, many many more questions ok. So please you know guide them properly, uh, sensitize them in between 4 to 6 months of age so that the initiation of complementary feeding goes so well that you know you will be so happy and you will actually you know when you use lot of this uh, apps there is one app that I really like it is called child growth tracker uh, you know uh, on the, the logo is basically the baby is kind of climbing on the stairs you know uh, or the ladder. So, uh, so that uh, basically that is child growth tracker and uh, you know you follow those babies and put that baby's growth on those tracker and you will see how babies grow so beautifully and when you start uh, nutrient dense foods you know uh, like uh, beans or nuts and seeds and eggs and meats you will see children length grow beautifully you know and focus on length after 6 months ok because you have focused on weight for first 6 months now comes the length because now if child is not growing in length and if child is growing only on weight that means child is getting lot more energy dense food. That means child is not getting enough nutrients most likely it is protein and some of this type 2 nutrients which I mentioned. 
Okay, so for after six months of age, I generally look at the length aspect and if length is growing well and if child has already had good weight at six months of age, even if child do not gain so much of weight, you know, as recommended by WHO, I don't, I don't worry too much because if the length is growing, that means child is getting enough nutrients. Yes, you may need to increase some calories in the form of good fats. So do not give too much of this uh, starch or potatoes or rice or you know a uh, lot of this fruits to, to gain child's weight, okay. You gain child's height and to get uh, weight going, I do recommend to kind of give uh, more amount of you know good fats again uh, in the form of egg or you know your meats or you know your ghee, uh, your uh, yogurt with full fat. You know, so all that will definitely improve the calorie intake, okay. But you want to have good calories, you don't want to have calories which are empty calories, okay. Uh, again, I am not going too much into calorie more because uh, you know, it, you can have a good calorie and bad calorie, but uh, as if you see a child growing very well in height. Uh, and not so much on weight, so then you may need to increase, uh, you know, your uh, fat intake, baby's fat intake, okay. All right, so that comes your complementary feeding stage. Uh, one more thing which I have also noticed that many mothers start junk food very early on, okay. Please refrain from exposing children to a lot of junk food. Believe me, the habit that you create when children are young, that habit will go long way, long way, you know, and you want to be the role model. You you cannot expect that you eating a lot of junk food, you eating samosas and jalebis and you are telling children that no, no, you don't eat, uh, it's okay if I eat but you cannot eat, no, that's it doesn't go that, that way. So keep your junk food to just occasion maybe one once a month or so, there has to be some special occasion, okay. And uh, believe me, children will do the same. Uh, so inculcate those good habits, inculcate about uh, exercising. So if you are exercising, children will, even young child will look at you, you know, they're, they're, you, are you will be amazed how uh, uh, such good observation that they have, you know. So think of that and, uh, you know, uh, just inculcate all those habits by you being a role model for them, okay. Uh, avoid uh, kind of exposure to screens even for younger children especially because, you know, uh, they do have a uh, lot of uh, attention deficit when they are exposed to uh, kind of uh, digital uh, screen too early on in life. So in America, in fact, we are very, very strict about, uh, uh, you know, we have zero tolerance to screen uh, for first couple of years or so. Okay, so that's important and uh, I think uh, uh, I think I have covered pretty much all the topics uh, that I wanted to discuss and uh, I would like to thank a few people. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank NPTEL, uh, um, both Ms. Bharti, uh, Ms. Bharti Satpal and Ms. Uh, Ms. Bharti Tari and also uh, my uh, TAs uh, Bela and Tasneem you have just been amazing. Uh, also Tushar who has coordinated uh, my live recording and sessions and his team and uh, full IT Madras team who is uh, coordinating the, this Nep Neptil course and, uh, and of course uh, all of you for joining this course and you know, um, you know I, and there might be difference of opinion but we all are still learning and you know I am open to learn from you guys. So if you have any experiences that you may have uh, after taking this course in the, in the practical life, uh, do share it with me and uh, thank you so much and uh, uh, hopefully you know we will have uh, next uh, uh, session or next course in Hindi. So if anybody would like to take this course in Hindi, uh, you can ask them to join probably in July. Let me see if I, if I can do it. Uh, but thank you so much.